Okay, g'day all and welcome to another video. So the topic of today is function pointers. We're gonna have a bit of a look at the syntax for function pointers, but then we're gonna go through a bunch of examples of uh, how they're generally used because that's sort of more important than, um, yeah, just the basic syntax. Uh, okay, so first of all, what is a function pointer? Uh, a function pointer is pretty simply just a, a variable that points to a function rather than uh, pointing to data. So the syntax for creating a function pointer looks a little bit strange, but here it is here. So we put the uh, return type, and then we put the pointer name with a little star beside it in brackets. And after that, we've got the parameter list. Okay, so an example should make that pretty clear. If we've got a function like int add, int x, and int y just here, then if you wanna make a pointer for that type of function, you might do something like int, and then open up your parentheses, and then star, and then whatever you want your pointer name, and then the parameter list, which in this case is int and int. So you notice that you've got to get your function pointer uh, declaration to match the parameter types that the function actually takes. Yeah, so, so after you've declared your little function pointer just here, you could uh, point it to the add function with something just as simple as this, my PTR equals add. And then, the interesting part, once your uh, function pointer is actually pointing to some useful code, you can execute your function pointer as though it was a normal function. Uh, okay, so a couple of little strange things about function pointers. First of all, the syntax looks a bit odd um, with these parentheses around the pointer name and the little star at the start, but the compiler has to actually be able to recognize that you're trying to define a function pointer, and that's just the syntax that they decided. You might notice that when you assign a function to your pointer, you don't need to take the address of the function. So you can just say my pointer equals add, for example, if you're pointing it to the add function. The other thing, when you're actually calling the function, uh, you don't have to put um, any indication that it's a function pointer. When you call the function, you can just do my PTR and then supply the arguments. Uh, but the other way that you can do it is you can put um, star PTR in uh, parentheses. When you call the function pointer, that might make it clear that you're calling a function pointer using a pointer, if that's important to uh, highlight in your code. A lot of the time, the uh, function pointers are actually type deft. Yeah, so we use um, type deft for our function pointers because it makes the code a whole lot easier to read. <laughs> Um, so you'll do something like this uh, like this code just here. We've got a, a type def of a function pointer. It uh, returns an integer, and its name is uh, binary operator. Okay, so then to use instances of this function pointer, you could do something like uh, binary operator oper1 equals add, and then uh, you want to make another one, binary operator oper2 equals sub, etc., etc. So the other thing that type defs allow us to do uh, really, really simply is uh, create arrays of functions. So... Uh, arrays of function pointers, sorry. Create a type def, and then if you want to make an array of, say, this binary operator just here, um, you could just specify binary operator, and then in the square brackets, however many you want in the array. Yeah, the same as normal uh, arrays, pretty much. Okay, that's good. So that's the basic syntax of a function pointer. We know how to define them and how to call function pointers, but really the question is, why is that useful? So C++ has a standard template library for use with uh, vectors and various other um, container types. Um, okay, so the first example I've got just here, this is an example of STD transform or standard transform. What we're doing in this example just here is, uh, it's pretty simple really, but the flexibility of, uh, of this sort of technique in, uh, in code is really, really important. So we've got ourselves a couple of uh, vectors just here called A, B, and C. Uh, we initialize A and B to just random values for this example. And then the line that we're interested in is this one just here. Uh, std transform, a.begin, a.end, uh, b.begin, c.begin, and add. All right, so that final parameter on the end just there, uh, that's a function pointer. Yeah. Uh, what we do, we specify a function. I've got this one just up here. Add, and then we pass that function to the std transform as a parameter, yeah, as a function pointer on the end. So what this is gonna do is uh, perform this little add function just here to every single element in the A and B arrays or vectors, and it's gonna store the result in the C vector. Okay, so another example, another really common example using the uh, STL is uh, sorting. So it's often preferable to have your data sorted for various binary searches and things like that. Uh, sorting is, uh, is also really, really easy with the STL, and uh, once again, it uses uh, function pointers so that we can specify a little bit of flexibility in here. 
Uh, okay, so this example just here creates a little vector called A, and once again, we just push back some uh, random values onto that, just so that it's some unsorted list. Okay, then we print out the unsorted list just to make sure that it is unsorted, or perchance it could be sorted anyway, but it's very unlikely. Uh, STD sort is uh, one of the STL functions. You need to include uh, algorithm. Yeah, if you want to use STD sort, algorithm. Uh, but anyway, so STD sort takes uh, two uh, vector iterators. We've got uh, A begin and A end. And then at the end, once again, we see our happy little friend, the function pointer. Uh, so STD sort is actually going to use a comparison sort, something like quick sort or merge sort, something like that. And for each of the pairs that it's comparing, each of the pairs of parameters, uh, it's actually going to call our little function just here, ascending or descending or whatever function you pass as your final parameter. And if the function returns true, then the A value will be seen as coming before. And if the function returns false, then the B value will be seen as coming before. Uh, long story short, we just have to specify the comparison itself uh, to get ascending and descending or, or various other different uh, forms of sort. And STD sort will figure out the rest. You can actually use uh, lambdas in a lot of places where you can use uh, function pointers. So for example, in STD sort, we can pass a.begin and a.end. And then as the function pointer parameter, we can actually pass a lambda. Uh, which is quite cool. That means that we don't have to write a separate ascending or descending function. Uh, we can just put the comparison that we're kind of after right there in the code where it's needed. Uh, this particular example just here just returns randomly uh, true or false. So this is actually not going to sort your list at all. It will in fact uh, shuffle it. All right, so the STL uh, uses function pointers quite, quite kind of extensively, gives us a lot of flexibility. But another example of where function pointers are really useful is in what's called a jump table. Um, so often this will actually be lower level than we're generally coding in, say, C or C++, um, stuff for the compiler. Um, okay, so what I've got just here in my little uh, jump table example, the first example isn't actually a jump table, it's just a switch. Uh, we've got a little calculator just here, so I've got a bunch of functions at the top. No op is just a kind of default no operation, but the useful functions add, subtract, div uh, or divide and mul for multiply. And then down here in the code, all we do, we just uh, ask the user for two values, a and b, and then we ask them which operation they want out of uh, add, subtract, multiply or divide. And then we use a little switch down here. So this is not a function pointer example at all. I'm just sort of showing you the idea. <laughs> um, we use a little switch down here to uh, execute whatever function they decided to type. And uh, yeah, we should get the result from uh, adding or subtracting or whatever they chose to do. So the switch block just there is taking the role of something that a function pointer could do. So let's have a bit of a look. Okay, so this second version of the code just here is much the same thing, only here we've used uh, or we've defined what's called a jump table, uh, often called a jump table. It's just a lookup table of function pointers. So I've got a type def here, fnptr, which just specifies the function pointer that we're kind of looking at. So it takes um, two floating point parameters and returns void. And then we create a lookup table. And then to each of the elements of the function pointer, we add the functions that we want. So no op, add, sub, mul, and div assigned to the um, elements zero through to four of our little jump table just here. Then when we come down here and we get our two little values from the user, A and B, and we ask them for a function, we actually ask them for a number, say one for plus, then two for minus and three for times. Uh, then we can just call whichever function they uh, selected. Yeah, look up table and use the opper variable, which is, um, yeah, that's whatever they typed in for the operator. Okay, so that is a lot less code than, than before when we had the switch. There are several advantages to a switch in a way and several advantages to the function pointers as well, or the jump tables. Uh, so often the compiler actually converts switches to jump tables. Yeah, so it, it might be clearer and uh, it might be faster to just use a switch. So the benefit of using a jump table is that we could actually change the order of these functions or, or indeed the functions themselves. Using a jump table, you've got that kind of flexibility. You can change the uh, functions at runtime. Yeah, so there's pros and cons to using both ways. Usually you would stick to a switch. Okay, so STL is good. Um, Jump tables are great as well, but function pointers have even more uses, I kid you not. Uh, function pointers and event handling. We're not going to go through this in, in very much detail because this is a whole kind of topic of itself. Uh, but this code right here is the uh, standard or fairly standard code for, for uh, opening up a Windows form. 
Okay, so what we're looking at here in standard Windows programming is what's called a callback. Yeah, and a, a callback is really just a function pointer or it's a usage of a function pointer in event-driven programming. So you'll see just at the top here, I've got a declaration for something. It returns an L result and it's called windproc. It takes a bunch of uh, kind of random looking parameters. Uh, in order to open up a window or a Windows form, what you do in C++, you first have to register a class. Uh, so you fill out a structure specifying some of the attributes of the class. And one of the attributes just down here, okay, this one right here, LPFN windproc, that's actually the event handling procedure. Yeah, so the way that this works, after we've registered a class and we open up our window, Whenever the user interacts with the keyboard or the mouse, whenever the user does something that uh, sends an event to our program, Windows will actually call whatever function we passed as a function pointer. So windproc or wndproc is often the name that you'll see, but occasionally there's some variations on that, but Windows is calling this um, callback just here over and over again whenever there's a, an event. And from our callback, we can sort of specify whether the event was handled or not. Uh, whether it should go on to uh, be handled by the system. Uh, anyway, event-driven programming and uh, function pointers go hand in hand. Another use of uh, function pointers is in uh, dynamic link libraries or DLLs. Dullalur. What we do here, sorry, what we do here with uh, with the Dullalur library, you call a function load library just here. It's another one of these Windows functions, so you got to include you got to include Windows.h or um, your compiler will get sad. Uh, load library, and then you supply a DLL name, so my DLL .dll in this example. But then we've got this other function down here, get proc address. So get proc address is actually the function that returns the address of a function within the DLL. So what you end up getting is um, a function pointer back, something like math function just here. So this code just here is the exe file. This will be the front end that uses the DLL. Uh, if we scroll down a little bit, we can see the functions themselves. So this would be the DLL file just here. Now you do have to change a few things in the build settings of your project. Change it over to uh, DLL. Yeah, otherwise you'll just be making an exe. You can actually call the functions in an exe too if you want, but usually DLL is the way to go. <laughs> yeah, so you just say uh, x turn c and decal spec DLL export. All of that stuff is just to uh, make the function actually discoverable and uh, export and everything for your DLL. But um, yeah, it's pretty easy to just make libraries of, of, of uh, code in DLLs and uh, call them. Okay, so we've had a good look at a whole bunch of uh, examples and common uses of, uh, of function pointers. What I wanna do now is uh, just have a bit of a look at something really, really interesting. So this is very, very low level and it won't always come up, but I do think it's interesting. So we're gonna have a bit of a squiz. Uh, okay, so I've got this little program just here. It's got a little add function, takes two integers, A and B, and it returns the sum of them. Then I'm defining a function pointer. I'm pointing it to that add. And then we're getting a couple of numbers from the user and we're calling the function just there with FNPTR, A, B. We're printing out the sum, but the interesting part is what happens after that. So straight after that, what I've done is I've um, just cast that function pointer to an unsigned char star. And then I've printed out what it's pointing to as, uh, as hex. So let's just have a bit of a run and see what it prints out. All right, so we've cast a function pointer to an unsigned char star. Let's see what it finds. <laughs> All right, so we printed out a bunch of gibberish, seemingly. Uh, it's printed out here for us, 8D411, C3, CC, CC, CC. What could that be? Well, this is machine code. That is the machine code right there of the add function. Yeah, so that's pretty interesting. If we just put a bit of a break point right here and I run this, uh, again, we'll just run it. I'll type a number, six and eight. Uh, if we come over here to the disassembly, uh, we'll see just down here, so call add. So this is where the function add was actually gonna be called, but if we just step into that, uh, right there, okay, so this is the assembly over here of the add function itself. Just this is the uh, LEA instruction and then ret for return. But what you'll see over the side in the machine code part, uh, 8D0411C3, which is exactly these numbers just here. And you will find that this doesn't always work if you're using uh, debug mode. So I've got this project just here set to release. And the reason for that is that the debug mode has to put in a whole heap of extra information and extra jumps and things like that. So you'll often find yourself in the middle of a jump table or something like that if you try to print out the machine code for um, code that's not, um, for code that's in debug mode. 
Uh, anyway, it's really interesting to see that the uh, instructions are actually just data themselves, and uh, you can print them out as, uh, as hex or characters or integers or whatever you like. Um, a function pointer literally points to the machine code of the function. Anyway, that's about all that I wanted to say, and uh, I hope that was interesting for folks, and I just want to say uh, have a really good day, and thank you very much for watching. Adios.